What's up guys, it's Kevin once again, and before I start this video, I would just like to address a few things. Uh, firstly, the gameplay that you are watching now is completely irrelevant to the rest of this video. This is gameplay of myself getting a nuke back in Modern Warfare 2 in about 2 minutes or so. I mean, obviously that's not the quickest anyone's ever gotten a nuke before, but it's the quickest I've ever gotten a nuke before. I got this gameplay a long time ago, but I never really found a way to incorporate it into a video up until now. Secondly, I would like to apologize for the very long hiatus in between videos. I gave my co-owner, Manny, the task of making and posting the next video, but unfortunately his project is taking much longer than expected, so I decided to just go ahead and make the vi this video, which, as you can tell by the title, is a countdown list. I will probably make others of these haphazard lists, as I will call them, but I wouldn't necessarily refer to it as a series. I will just make and post more installments when I feel like sharing my opinion. Which uh, reminds me, these are simply my opinions. I have no intention to unleash the fury of butthurt fanboys, nor do I intend on starting a shitstorm. Just because I feel this way does not mean I expect you to as well. Everybody has their own opinions and I can respect that, and as long as you can respect mine, I'll respect yours. Anyway, without further ado, please enjoy the haphazard list of the top 5 zombie games. First up, number 5. Plants vs. Zombies. As most people know, Plants vs. Zombies gained most of its popularity on the mobile market. It is a defense game that involves you and your army of plants defending against a swarm of oncoming zombies. This game is about as casual as a zombie game can get. I mean, you're it's just a basic defense game. I mean, like, it's plants. You're not tearing through zombies with machine guns. You're shooting them with peas. And, you know, but that doesn't make it bad. I mean, unlike most of the zombie genre, this game is not dark and depressing and this allows everybody to play and enjoy the game not just mature audiences thus i chose plants for zombies because it i've myself have spent countless hours on my phone defending against the waves of zombies and not allowing them to eat my brains the fourth best zombie game that i chose is dead rising 2 Dead Rising 2 is basically an open world zombie game. The storyline is nothing to write home about, but screwing around is tons of fun. The game takes place in Fortune City, Nevada, which is essentially a rebuilt version of Las Vegas after Las Vegas was destroyed by a nuke used to end a zombie outbreak that had occurred years before. Therefore, there are many shops, restaurants, and casinos to explore, and as you can see, Fortune City has become completely overrun by zombies. And if you were to play the storyline, you would learn that your character, Chuck Green, is being blamed for the outbreak. So, Chuck has 72 in-game hours to clear his name and expose the real culprit. If you don't give a damn about the story, then you have 72 in-game hours, which is a lot of time, to go around and do whatever the hell you want. Throughout Fortune City, there are hundreds of items that you can pick up and kill zombies with. If you combine two particular items together, you can create what are known as combo weapons, which are not only much more efficient at killing zombies, but most of them are pretty badass to be honest. You can also buy items such as keys to the few vehicles that are scattered around the area, which is, as you can imagine, tons of fun as well. I mean honestly. What can be more satisfying than running over zombies in a sports car? I mean, really, that's fun as hell. But if that isn't enough, you can play co-op mode, which allows you to do everything I just previously mentioned, but with a friend. It also makes playing the story much more enjoyable. And yes, I will admit that it, the game as a whole gets boring after a while, after you run out of things to do. But if you ever have the opportunity to pick up the game for a relatively cheap price, I mean, I got it for about 10 bucks, then I would definitely suggest doing so, especially if you have a friend who you could play the game with. Next on my list is number 3, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead started out as just a humble comic book series. 
After developing a very large fan base through the series, the franchise blew up when it, adapt when it was adapted as a television series on the TV station AMC. Before I go any further about the video game, I would just recommend reading both the comics and watching the television show. They are both amazing. And, I mean, I am a huge fan of the television show myself, and I want to get into the com comic books eventually, but I'm not sure when I'm going to. Anyway, it was only a matter of time before they made a video game about the franchise. However, The Walking Dead as a whole has always been focused on the people and their responses to the zombie apocalypse, rather than just mindlessly killing zombies. The game, which is based off of the comic book and not the TV series, is no exception. The Walking Dead acts as one large narrative. A very large portion of the game is dialogue. So, you may be asking, why did I name it number three on my list? Because, I did so because you, the player, can choose what cho choices the main character, whose name is Lee, makes. The choices that you make affect you, your experience for the rest of the game. Depending on who you choose to side with in an argument, that person may help you later on, while the one who you chose to argue against will be more hesitant to help you later on. If you accidentally say something to somebody, it may come back to haunt you later on in the game. Every single decision you make will affect your experience, and that's what makes the game so damn good. The other amazing element to the game is the writing. Obviously, since the whole game is really just one large, like, novel, um, the writing has to be great, and it is. You begin to form emotional bonds with many of the characters that you meet throughout the game, especially Clementine, who is a little girl you find all alone and decide to take care of her while you try to find her parents with her. Yet, the writers, at the same time, are not afraid to kill off the people that you have just grown so emotionally attached to. And, in some situations, you are given a choice to assist either one person or the other. And if you choose to help one person out, you may just have caused the death of the other. The Walking Dead is not necessarily filled with action, but if you want an amazing story where you can control how it plays out for your character, then you should definitely download this game. Number two on my list is Call of Duty Zombies. Now, the Call of Duty series has been eh, acclaimed by many people, but also criticized by many people, and it's a first-person shooter series. Now, three games in the series have included an additional mode besides just the single player and the multiplayer, which is a zombie mode. These three games are Call of Duty World at War, Call of Duty Black Ops, and Call of Duty Black Ops 2. In this video, it shows my favorite of the three, which is the original Black Ops. And this is mainly due to the fact that the World at War zombie maps, which I overall enjoyed more than the other two, are also available to download in this one. Todd Zombies is pretty simplistic. You defend yourself against increasingly difficult waves of zombies. Sounds easy enough, but it's not. To help you do so, you may purchase weapons off the wall with the points that you earn, or you may buy perks which give you boosts such as increased health or faster reloading until you get hit and go down, in which case you'd have to be revived and you would have to buy your perks again if you want them again. You may also buy weapons from the so-called mystery box, which gives you a random weapon each time you use it. Each zombie map in its respective game has its own distractions and diversions, but the concept is all the same. You may play up to four people in the zombies game mode, with the exception of one game mode in Black Ops 2 Zombies, entitled Grief Mode, which allows eight people to play at once. If you have three friends playing this with you, it is fun as hell. The waves as I mentioned before, become increasingly difficult as you progress, and what started out as a piece of cake soon turns into a hellish nightmare. Once you get to about round 18 or so, you become forced to use everything in your arsenal to survive, even if that includes screwing over your teammates, which can be funny as hell as well. Even if you do not enjoy the Call of Duty campaign and multiplayer, in my opinion, the zombies mode makes it completely worth it. Finally. My favorite zombie game of all time is Left 4 Dead 2. 
Now, if you watched my haphazard guide to this game, which I posted probably like two months ago or so, I don't know exactly, then I do not have to spend much time explaining it. If not, I would recommend either checking out the video if you want a full description of the game, or you could just read a Wikipedia article on it if you would prefer to do that. Anyway, Left 4 Dead 2 is an amazingly crafted game. The game demands teamwork and communication if you wish to be successful. Many zombie games attempt to incorporate teamwork, but the Left 4 Dead series excels at it. Do not expect to do well in this game if you are not a team player. Aside from the co-op, the competitive multiplayer in this game is fantastic as well. My personal favorite is the versus game mode, which is where I got my gameplay from in both this video and in the guide video. In versus, you and your team of three other players play the campaigns, all while attempting to make it further than the enemy team of four does. The thing that makes this game mode unique is, however, when one team is the survivors, the other team is the infected. That's right, you can play as the zombies in this game. Now I don't know if Left 4 Dead introduced this concept, but they sure as hell did a good job with it. Similar to playing as the survivors, you need teamwork to do well as the infected. You cannot just run in there and expect to wreck shit up, you will get annihilated. Instead, you must coordinate your attacks with your teammates in order to succeed. If you are a team player, or if you are in the mood to play a phenomenal cooperative game, I would highly recommend this game. Even after 4 years, the game still holds up as one of the best zombie, as well as one of the best cooperative games ever made. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my installment of my top 5 favorite zombie games. Uh, once again, these are just my opinions. I do not claim them to be correct opinions, because really there are no correct opinions. Anyone can have their own opinion, and it's correct to them, I guess. And I would suggest or recommend if you disagree with me or agree with me, state so in the comments section below. I mean, you're welcome to as long as you don't uh, start dishing out insults at people who don't believe the same thing as you. As long as you can keep the opinions sophisticated and free of insults of other people, then I think we can have an enjoyable time. But anyway, that just about does it. So be on the lookout for Manny's video that he will be posting once he finishes it up. It will be, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. And until next time, see ya.